For that painting to be hung the way it was, for as long as it was, I could only imagine Jerry and Rita sitting at the foot of their bed and opening that door and closing it just so they could see the painting they stole. So what do we know about Rita and Jerry Alter? We know that he taught music at some point. Uh, I know she was a, a speech therapist of some sort here in the Silver Schools. You never really saw them in town. They kept to themselves for the most part. Well, they were considered kind of more of outsiders because they weren't from here and they didn't have no relatives here. They invited us over for dinner. I have two daughters. We invited them as well. We drove up. We were like, oh my God. Here was this house, like something out of Beverly Hills or something. It had a pool, which was unheard of in those days for people to have their own pool. What would Solon de Kooning painting be doing in Cliff, New Mexico? It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's sort of out there. I don't know if they chose Cliff because it was such an isolated spot. They just wanted some place where they could get away from everything or get a place where they could get away with everything. Based on what we know from the estate, we know they traveled and they traveled very well. You know, for Christmas break, for summer break, for all the breaks we had during the school year, they would go someplace. That's my understanding that they went to almost every country. It wasn't just your normal, let's go to Mexico and do the touristy stuff. It was, we're going to Tahiti and we're going to have our own hut and that kind of travel. I remember on the drive home, Rick and I talked about it. It was like, Rick said, oh my God, you know, where do they get the money to do that? How do they do it? I want to do that. Why can't we do that? Because people didn't have that kind of stuff, that kind of luxury in those days. At that time, teachers in Silver City were not paid well. And the only thing we could figure out that their families had money or they had inherited money. So that was kind of a, a puzzle to us. Why would they move to Cliff? It's not accessible. It's, there was no access to a big airport. In those days, the closest airport was El Paso, which would have been about three hours away. I still don't know how they were able to travel as much as they did and all over the world like they did. It makes you wonder if they were taking things on their trips or picking things up on their trips as well. They only live maybe a half a mile from us. But I'm at school with the daughter, Barbara. And Cliff School's small, you know, it's only, it's got 120 students from kindergarten to 12th grade. For three years, we were all in the same class. So we, I was around her quite a bit. She was quiet. She was kind of different. She didn't blend with the people. And I know they never let anybody go to their house. And they have a gate, so you couldn't go in. Some people ask her, hey, why don't you have a party and let us go swimming? But she never did. She wouldn't. Said her parents wouldn't let her. I guess the main thing that stands out is driving a 280ZX to school. <laughs> you know, I always thought that's a, that's a nice car back then. Most of us had $500 trucks, you know, with, that we just barely could keep running and stuff. And here she had a Pretty nice. I think somebody had asked her and she said, well, it's my mom. She let me borrow it. When I 
heard about it, I was like, oh my gosh, it was that car. When they put out the sketches and everything, it, it looked a lot like her mom. It's luckily people that found it and they didn't just look at it and just throw it away in a garbage bag and never be found. I thought it was probably the ugliest painting I've ever seen in my life. And quite frankly, I probably would have left it there because the nephew said, anything you guys don't want, just leave in the house. We'll have the realtor take it to the landfill. No, I probably, I, yeah, I probably would have left it there. I thought it was just ugly. <laughs> um. I do eight a piece on those. A lot of people came forward as the story evolved early on. One of the stories was that Rita explaining to a care worker um, that painting was at a school and it belonged to her and her husband, and they went back to get it. That being said, led us down the rabbit hole of maybe Rita had modeled for the painting. In her early years, she was beautiful, really beautiful. Uh, the artist, de Kooning was a womanizer, and from what we heard and have read, uh, slept with a woman that he uh, painted. And my romanticized version is that Rita maybe posed for him, and that's why Jerry thought the painting belonged to him, since Rita was his wife. The story of Rita being the model for the painting makes more sense than anything else. But I don't know how that can ever be proven. There was some meaning for them to pick that painting. I mean, I, I know they knew the value, but they didn't try to sell it. They just buy it not knowing what it was, or did they know what it was? Then their house was full of things that they had purchased while on their travels. Not just your typical chachka, but really amazing stuff. Jerry and Rita's house was full, I mean full of art. We never wanted to turn down a donation. It was the executor of the state, which I think was a nephew. They came into town and they just came in a real fast hurry and backed up stuff they didn't want, hauled it out of there and left town. They hauled it all in there on a Sunday and then Monday and Tuesday when Sue and I went in there, we thought, oh my, oh my goodness, oh, what are we gonna do with this stuff? I mean, it was all over the place. There were the bronzes, there was turquoise, there were paintings. The garden club raised from the auction about 122000 and from a silent auction, they raised about $6,000, i would say. But what I don't understand is how they could sit out there with all this stuff, or how her family didn't know anything about any of this. I don't know why he donated all of this stuff to the Garden Club before calling us in to buy. It wasn't that he donated it for even a tax write-off. He just donated it to get rid of. Why? And the life that they lived, it's not explained. I kind of think that the de Kooning wasn't the only thing they stole. I can't imagine them having that much money with him retiring at the age he did and, and on her salary. Even if they had inherited a, a fairly good amount of money, I, I just can't see them having the kind of money they had when, when Rita passed away. From what I've gathered, they, there was left a million dollars in the bank account. If they were able to go to to Tucson and get that thing and come back, to me, they've done it before. It was, it's interesting, but I still say they stole more stuff. <laughs> I think um, Jerry and Rita chose Cliff to hide. I think there's more secrets that they took with them to the grave. They hid in plain sight. My personal take on this whole story is that they stole it. I think Rita and, and Jerry plotted and planned. They distracted the guard and I think the other person went up, cut it out of its frame, put it under their trench, ran back to that rust-colored rust car, and drove off. I think they're the ones who stretched it, put it back on a stretcher, reframed it, and hung it behind their bedroom door. I think it was them. Why would they just have steal this painting, knowing what it was worth, and just leave it in their bedroom, on a wall behind the door? 
because that painting was hung solely for them to see, period. I mean, it, it sounds like it pretty much was stolen, but for what reason, I have no idea. Except the only thing that makes the most sense to me is that they thought it was their painting. She was a lovely person. I can't, and thinking about her doing something like this, I just, I can't fathom it. There's a lot of mystery still behind them. Did they think it was a victimless crime? It was victimless. I believe it damaged the museum's reputation, you know, severely. It hurt people who worked at the museum deeply. And they, again, they didn't steal it from the museum, they stole it from all of us. I don't think they ever had any remorse. I don't think they ever cared, really. You know, they got what they wanted. If they did steal it, the selfishness was unbelievably selfish. The real damage they did was to the donor of the painting, seeing it was donated in memory of his a son who had died. I don't know how much Jerry and Rita will play into it when I see it. That's part of the story, but the real story is it's back at the museum because that's where she belonged, you know? She was part of the museum, and so yeah, I, right from the get-go, I've been excited that it's going home. having a conversation, um, Olivia and I, she said, oh my God, I can't wait to get that painting out of the frame. I'm like, well, what are you gonna do with the frame? And she's like, get rid of it. And I said, can I have it? And she said, I don't see why not. I said, I'll be there this weekend to pick it up. And I said, would you do me a favor? She's like, what? I said, would you all sign the back of it? So everybody involved has signed the back. We need to get you to sign oh. it. What do we say? Especially on our own frame, what do we Hi. say? What do you say? Um, I think it may have a little value. You know, it does to me. Anyway.